Hello and welcome back to Kitty Talks Dogs. Today it's all about commercial grooming as easy as possible, as quickly as possible with the help of attachment combs and then finishing with the scissor over comb technique. Today we have with us Boomer. Boomer is born in 2017. Boomer is a Shih Tzu and we're going to groom Boomer as commercial, as quickly and as easy as possible. We are going to first prepare Boomer all with the Hydra shampoo and afterwards we are going to use the quick attachment combs and finish with the scissor on comb technique. If you are interested in any of the products I'm using, there's a link down below with all the products. You can just click on there and find the products. If you like the content of this type of videos, please don't forget to subscribe. And here I would like you to meet Boomer. As you can see, Boomer is a very big Shih Tzu with a lot of hair. His hair is not so very long because the owners want it as short as possible so they don't have a lot of maintenance. Without any further delay, let's start grooming. For Boomer's ears, we will need a lot of product because it's very necessary. I'm going to use the ear powder because that gives me a very good grip to pull out the hairs. I'm going to help by using the finger condoms to have more grip and to keep it all very hygienic and clean for my fingers. If I've pulled out all the visible hairs, I'm going to use the forceps to get the really deep hairs inside of the ears. I'm going to use the ear curl to dissolve all the brown wax and the grease and the dirt and together with that I'm going to use the big q-tips and after all the ears are nicely clean I'm going to use the ear wipes to clean the outside of the ears so the ears are squeaky. Here you see the ear, you see how greasy it is and with the powder it really goes very fast and quick. It, the powder absorbs all the grease and the dirt and with the powder you really have very much grip to get out all the hair. I'm not trying to take out much at the time and here you see me using the forceps and here I'm like pulling on his ear to get it up so there's no creases inside so I can get the hairs from deep inside the ears. And here you see me using the liquid ear care. I really like to use a lot of ear care. I submerge the ear with the ear care and then I massage and to get the ear care have a chance to dissolve all the dirt and the wax. And when the ears are really very dirty before I use the Q-tips. I also like like to put some ear care on the Q-tips so there's no they are not dry and they can't hurt the ears because it's too dry. That way I can take all the wax out of the ears very quickly. As you can see here, the Q-tips are quite greasy, so the product did what it had to do. And now I'm just finishing with an ear wipe so the outside of the ear is also nice and clean. And here you see a squeaky clean ear. And now clipping the nails. Boomer is a dog that goes walking a lot. As you can see here, only the side nails are very long and his other nails, we are just going to grin them a little because they are not really sh very long, but they have a little a sharp edge to them and we are just going to take the sharpness out with the grinder. I'm using the cap on the grinder because Boomer has quite long hair and we don't want to have the hair twisting in the grinder. If you have a dog with short hair, you don't need to use the grinder with the top cap, you can just take it off. Let's do some prep work. So here you see me clipping between the pads. I am using the Heinegger style mini 
and I'm just going, first of all, I'm taking the hair which are very, very visible and after I, all the hair is gone which is visible, then I will slightly open the pads and go in the pads and clean out all the hair between the pads. I'm also going to go on the back of the pad, I'm going to make a line here so when I'm finished washing and blow drying and I comb all the hair down it's then very easy to go with the scissor and you will have a nice round foot. As you can see here the sides I'm also taking a little with the clipper and here I'm very nicely showing the line I'm making at the back of the pad and also on the other side, also the front of the pads, at the nails, I'm like trying to get as much as possible hair that are in the way, away, so afterwards we don't have to like scissor a little bit here and scissor a little bit there to have a clean pad and a clean foot. And here we are doing the tummy, and here I'm just lifting up his two back legs, and now Boomer is ready for the bath. As you can see here, we've chosen to use the odor neutralizing shampoo for the first wash because it's really necessary. Boomer is a dog that likes to go out walking very much and when he's dirty, the odor neutralizing shampoo really does his work. Hydra came out with a full summer range which is called Hydra Census Bliss and it's really fun to use, it's perfect for using in the summer and it has a very nice smell. From the Bliss range I'm going to use the shampoo, the conditioner and to have a better result in the conditioner I'm going to use a little booster. The booster with aloe vera and coconut oil is special for repairing the coat. So the Hydra odor neutralizing shampoo needs to be diluted 1 to 10. As you can see we first put the water in there otherwise there's foam everywhere and then we put the shampoo in the bottle. And the Hydra Bliss shampoo is concentrated 1 to 4. Here as well you see me first putting the water in the bottle and then the shampoo. And I'm not using cold water, I'm using lukewarm water, you can also use warm water but hot water is not recommended. Let's wet Boomer. I'm rubbing everywhere to nicely wet Boomer. And here I'm applying the odor neutralizing shampoo. I'm applying the shampoo everywhere except the head. So I'm going to start washing at the neck and then the shoulders, the front legs. Apply a bit more shampoo if necessary. And when I wash dogs, I really wash them firm. That means I'm not going to wash like this, but I'm really going to use my, the palm of my hands and the fingers because I have the opinion that the skin is also really dirty and greasy and the dogs are really on the floor all the time, they are outside and they really, for me, need to be rubbed with a firm rub. And last but not least, now I'm applying the shampoo to the head and I do this because it's important to me that when I'm washing dogs and they are like turning and sometimes we are touching them with our elbow and if you've already put shampoo on the heads on the face it might run into the eyes and that's why I always do the head the last because after I have washed the head I can rinse everything straight away. So the head is the last thing and the first thing to be rinsed. As you can see here, he had some dirt in the coat and it's very good if you have little bits in the coat to do this with a small eye comb. You can also use a flea comb to get all the bits and pieces out. And when we are washing dogs, we actually are washing the dogs, but only the dirt goes away with rinsing. So I insist when you are rinsing, you rinse everything out and you don't leave any shampoo in for the second wash and now you see me applying the Bliss shampoo for the second wash and here as well I'm starting at the neck as you can see here the shampoo is making a very nice lather 
And I'm also nicely washing between the feet and between the pads. And as you can see, Boomer is a very good boy in the bath. And here we go, rinsing for the second time. Always very careful not to put any water in the dog's nose. I really don't mind the lukewarm water going into the eyes because it's very difficult to wash the Shih Tzu without actually having water in the eyes. I just am very careful with shampoo. So when you start rinsing, make sure that all the shampoo is nicely rinsed out and you go with the shower around the face and around the nose and that there is no water going into the nose. Here you see me preparing the Bliss conditioner and there goes in 10 drops of the Hydra booster. Here I am nicely mixing the booster with the conditioner and then slowly applying everything to the coat. I'm taking like a little nut and putting it in my two hands and rubbing it in the coat. The conditioner is going to make sure that Boomer dries also quicker. And let's wait for five minutes until all the nutrients from the conditioner are absorbed by the coat and the skin. And now let's do some rinsing. Here as well, it's very important you rinse everything out. And when you think you've finished rinsing, I advise you to rinse again once more. And if you have a shower with some more pressure, you can test. If you put more pressure on the coat and you see like bubbles, it's like the conditioner which is not 100% being rinsed out. So don't hesitate to test yourself to make sure all the conditioners is very nicely everything rinsed out. And now let's dry the dog. I'm using the magic towel. Here I'm wetting the magic towel. I like to store the magic towel dry if it's not in use because I think it's better to store it dry for the bacteria and for the hygienic reasons. And I like to use the magic towel very much because it absorbs so much water than a towel. And here you see me using the magic towel everywhere. And here you will see how much water there comes out of the magic towel. And now let's do some blasting in the bath. I do this not to have all the water splash everywhere around the table. I'm just going to do a little and the rest we will do on the table. And see what we found here. We found a tick. A tick in the summer is very common. It's not a big problem and I will show you in a minute after we have dried the dog, how to take care of the tick and how to remove it. If you want to know more about ticks, we have made a blog on the Transgroom site. Just surf to www.transgroom.com and go to blogs and there you will have a full blog on ticks. So when you are using a blaster, just go very tight to the dog's skin and as you can see here all the water is like being blown away out of the coat. The air is like blowing the hair open and it's like you are brushing without using a brush. As you can see here we have a very curious Luna who just wants to play. As you can see here, I've put a towel under Boomer and I'm using a towel in my hands because all the water is like splashing away and if you take a paw and you put a towel behind the paw and with the blaster, if you blast on the hair, the water that is blown away will go into the towel and not on the other legs or on the other parts of the dog. So for me, using a towel while blastering is saving time. Let's do some brushing. I'm mainly going to use the Showtech Flex Groom brush today, the soft one. After the brushing, I'm going to use the Smooth Touch for finishing. But first, let's get rid of the tick. So as you can see here, I've chosen to use the small tick remover and I'm just sliding in the tick and then twisting. And there's a little hair twisting with me 
and here you see the tick has already let go. You can see here that the head is still on the tick and it's still very moving. I'm just going to remove the tick now and here you see where the tick was. Here you see me using the flex brush, just brushing down and up and here you see me like twisting the elbow outside to be able to do the back of the front leg and the inside of the front leg and I'm just gonna keep on brushing until all the curls are gone in all the directions I can. It's very easy just keep on brushing with the direction of the air straight at your brush so you brush each time where the air is and the warm air together with the brushing will make sure each hair is straight and is dried and fluffy and ready to be scissored. And here I'm just going to keep on brushing until all the curls are gone and now I'm taking the smooth touch slicker to do the head and let's just keep on brushing. Also the ears, the tips of the ears. It's very necessary that everything is nice and dry and straight. And now as you can see I'm going all over the work I'd done before with the flex groom brush with the smooth touch and everywhere I'm gonna go over it because the smooth touch is like finer, it has more pins which are very narrow to each other and for having the best finish it's best to have once time more with the warm air with the smooth touch slicker. And now let's do some clipping. I'm going to use the Heinegger Sapphire Clipper together with the Showtech attachment combs. For the attachment combs we always use the 30 blade. It's important to use the size 30 for using the attachment combs because if you use others, for example the 10 or the 7, the hair has to go like into the teeth first and then to be clipped. If you use the 30, the blades teeth are very short and the, the blade that really cuts is very close to the edge and as soon as the hair gets in touch with the blade it will be clipped so actually when you use the 30 the size 30 you will have a better finish so I really advise you always to use a size 30 together with the attachment combs for attaching the attachment comb it's very easy just see those two clips and just clip them at the bottom of the blade and pull the attachment comb upwards and it will be nicely fixed. Here you see me using the 13 millimeter attachment comb to go really short at the end of the neck and the sides of the head. I'm even going a little against the direction of the coat and also the shoulders I'm doing quite short and here I'm actually using only half of the blade I'm like going like this or if you can see on the bottle I'm like doing this I'm only using one side and if you see between the bottle it will mean that I'm going from short to half long to full long and this is making sure I don't have any annoying lines, short lines, a very big difference between short and long and that way I will have less scissoring work to do. Here as well at the other side of the face you see me going against the direction a bit and also the ears I am clipping with the same 13 millimeter attachment comb. And as you can see here, I'm like taking the hair and putting it over the attachment comb so it's easy clipped. And with the same blade, I am making the tummy as short as possible. And also here, you see me using the same technique. I'm using the left side of the clipper and on his 
left side and on the right side I'm only using one side of the attachment comb not to have any lines. Here at the back as well I'm going against direction to have a nice clean back. Also here I'm clipping a bit at the tail and now I am using the instead of the 13 millimeter the 25 millimeter. As you can see if I'm going with direction I'm not really having a lot of coat so for me it was really still too long so here I'm using the same 25 millimeter and I'm going against the direction of the coat. And of course this is my view but I think when you go against the direction for me you have a better finish. I don't actually want to go too short because I really would like to show you the scissor on comb technique. Here you see me actually following the growth of the hair and I'm going nicely against the direction of the coat. Here in slow motion you see how much hair is actually going to the blade and how much resistance the blade has. You see how also in slow motion I follow the hair growth. So with the attachment comb I'm not going like horizontal or vertical or I'm not like doing stripes. I'm just looking at the hair growth. In this case you see me going diagonal upwards and I'm slowly looking at the hair growth and moving on. And this will prevent you having lines or shorter lines. If you can go against the hair growth it's even better because as you can see the hair like is pushed into the clipper blades and the attachment blades and it's easier. Now we are ready for some finishing and styling. Today I'm going to use the Showtech Ergoline 18 cm straight scissor for all the small jobs like around the feet, the bottom of the feet, some overall scissoring and I'm going to use the fine blender, the blender from Ergoline with 48 teeth. This is a very good one for finishing. For the scissor on comb technique, the big work, I'm going to use the prime curved chunker because that fits to the curved combs I'm going to use and then at last I'm also going to use the curved, the fanatic curved 19 centimeter. And now the interesting work I'm going to use the swirl comb for the technique scissor over combing and this is fantastic because as you can see this is like curved and this takes the line of the dog because the dog's body is also curved and if you use this comb it's just as you can use the full comb because if you use a flat comb you can only use a little bit of the comb and this because it takes the form of the body and then together with a curved scissor you can just go quicker and take more hair in one go. The same for the curved. This is the feather light curved. We have them in small and in large and also by using these combs because they are curved for like the body it saves you time because also the dog's body is not flat it's round and while using the curved scissors you can take more hair and you can finish it quicker and better at once. I'm showing you the curved comb and the curved scissor and here you can see it's like made for each other. And here you see the same with a flat comb. And now let's do some scissoring. I'm explaining here that the dog is nicely round and by using the round comb and the round, round scissor, you have the possibility of making it better and quicker and easier. So here I'm going from the technique from the back to the from the front to the back and I'm like taking my comb upwards this way and I'm starting at the back. I'm here you see me lifting 
the tail to have a nice finish under the tail and to have it nice and clean there. You don't have to lift the hair every time to do the scissor on comb technique. At these places you can also do the old-fashioned way and just lift the hair and scissor and lift again and scissor again. And after you have scissored and lifted the hair and combed the hair in all directions, if there's no hair sticking out anymore, it's good. And now, as you can see, I'm using the second technique. This is now from the comb, from the back to the front. And I'm just moving forward and taking the hairs which are sticking out. And now I'm using the other technique again. I'm using the comb from the back to the front and lifting it up. And as you can see here, the hairs which are sticking out, I'm just scissoring them. I can't say I'm always using the scissor on comb techniques one certain way. I'm not that kind of person. For me, it's working like this. I'm trying with my comb from the front to the bottom. If that doesn't work, I turn my comb around and I'm going from the bottom to the front. And that way I'm working upwards. You have to like test yourselves and see which technique works the best for you, but not only for you, it's also depending on the dog's Coat. like a Yorkie or like um, um, another kind of straight coat, for example a Laza, maybe it's going to go better when you use the comb from the back to the front all the time and you don't change your technique, but here in this case with the Shih Tzu I am changing my technique now and then from the front to the back and from the back to the front. Also the comb has two sides. The swirl comb has a wide side and a fine side. I usually start with the wider side for scissoring and when I'm finished with the wide side to do the really finishing touches, I use the small size, the fine size. And here you see me just lifting up the coat because it's quite difficult to go so deep under the tummy. And here I'm just using not the scissor over comb technique, I'm just combing and making sure under there it's nice and tidy. And here as well for the top of the leg, it's very easy to make it nice and tidy with the swirl comb. At the, the loin, it's very easy and you just need to comb and scissor and comb and scissor and it's not only easy but it's very important that this place is nicely and tidy and if you have to keep on combing until it's tidy just comb and scissor and comb and scissor until all the hairs are nice and tidy. Here you see me using the other technique this is from the back to the front and I'm just gliding the comb through the hairs and all the hairs which are sticking out, I am scissoring. And now I am changing again technique and I'm going from the front to the back and lifting. As I said before, sometimes you are on one dog, you are using one technique and you won't change and on the other dogs, you will just use the other technique. Here in slow motion, you see me using lifting up the coat very nicely and actually I haven't said this before but it's like very important when you lift the coat up you lift it always up at the same length so when you're lifting it up I'm here I'm like taking two fingers and every time I'm scissoring I'm scissoring when the comb is just approximately at those two fingers height from the skin so this is the way how to have a very nice finish. So here you see me going from the back to the front and every time I'm lifting I'm like going a bit more forward to the front of the dog and this way you will have a very nice finish. And here you see me using also the curved combs and now I'm using the free hand. As you can see with my left hand, I'm holding the skin very tight to have a very nice finish there at the loin. And here I'm trying to lift to make the tummy as nice as possible. Some dogs don't like that, but Boomer doesn't have a problem with being lifted to the front legs. So for me, it's easier to finish the tummy. 
And here you see me lifting the coat again. And a little bit by little time, we will have a very good finish. Here as well, with the back legs. The top of the back legs you can certainly do with this comb. And now let's do some scissoring at the feet. As you can see here, when we've done good work with the clipper, we don't have to like fiddle around anymore very much with the scissors and we can just go nicely around the little feet and have a very good finish. Here as well the other side. I'm always going around the pads and I really won't, with my scissor, cross over the pads too much. So I'm making a point for myself just not to go, if I want to cut here, not to do this. I'm really with my scissor always trying to go around the pads and never go over the pads. And here the feet, I'm just going to scissor and comb and scissor and comb and make them as round as possible. Here with the snap-on combs I made the shoulder very short and here you see me as well with the swirl comb doing the finishing. And here now you see me finishing the front legs. I'm like combing very much and scissoring and combing and scissoring and all the hairs which are sticking out I'm scissoring. I like to have the legs at the front as straight as possible. So all the hairs which are sticking out, I'm cutting off. And here I'm just using my free hand, but I keep on combing all the hairs upwards. And as you can see here, we don't have to use the chunker scissors, the curved end, we can use the other end as well. We don't have to always use one side. It's also fun to use one time the other side of the curved. And I will keep on scissoring until all the hairs are exactly how I want them to be. If you don't have a lot of experience with the chunker scissors, it's important that you scissor well, like once or twice, but then you stop and you comb, because if you're not used to using chunkers, you will have like stripes or you will have like um, um, scissor marks. And for this way, it's important that you are not scissoring too much in the same area. So you can scissor once, scissor twice, but then go just next to the place you were scissoring and do it slowly, bit at the time. And you don't have to use chunkers, like here you see me using the Ergo line 17 centimeters from Yento, and I'm not using the chunker. I will just use the chunker to finish or finish with the blender. And here as well, you see me using the scissoring, the Yento scissoring comb. Yento scissoring comb has extra fine teeth and the teeth are very narrow to each other. And it's a very fun comb to use for like lifting the coat before scissoring. And here I'm trying to make the legs as straight as possible. And here you see me doing some finishing touches on the back. I've been using the chunker all this time and just to do the last bits I'm here using the Yento Ergoline 48 teeth blender. And I'm using the swirl comb, the fine side, just for the last finishing touches. Here I'm using the swirl comb, I'm scissoring a piece of the head. And here, as you can see, I'm like using every single technique from the front to the back, from the front, from the back to the front, just to make sure the head is nice. This is the system that I really like to use very much. I'm like slowly going forward with the comb and I keep on going forward and all the little hairs that stick out, I'm scissoring. I normally use this technique on the back of the dog as well, but with Boomer and his coat uh, structure, I use the other technique more. And here I'm just going freehand to finish the head. And here I'm using the comb again. Also the side here, I'm doing short. And now I'm finishing the ears. And now I'm combing everything upwards on the ears just to make sure I have all the little hairs and that it 
stays as natural as possible. Just keep on combing until all the hairs which are sticking out are scissored. So comb and scissor and comb and scissor and comb and scissor until all the hairs which are sticking out are gone. And here you see me also the back of the ears. So the place around the ears for me also needs to be like clean and there's a difference between the ear and the head. So I like to see the difference of the ear, where the ear gets out of the skin. I like to see that, so I'm taking a lot of time to make that as nice as possible. And here you see me working on the nose. I'm like scissoring, combing, scissoring, combing. I'm lifting the hair up and then I'm going around the eyes. And remember, Boomer is a commercial dog and the owners want Boomer to be quite short because they can't do the brushing and the combing so everything needs to be quite short. I really like to shave a little bit here between the nose so I see the lip. I think that's very cute then to see the, the his lip and then I'm gonna scissor the nice moustache around the lip. So everything which is sticking out too much, I'm going to take away. And here slowly, you see it's getting cleaner. And for the tail, I'm just going to twist, hold the tail and just cut all the hairs. Just comb everything backwards and scissor. And you can do this with the normal scissor. You can do that with the chunker whatever scissor is comfortable for you. Here as well we will comb the hair in any direction and keep on scissoring until the tail is totally styled and after combing there's no little hairs sticking out. And I keep on combing and combing once more. And here the back legs. I'm just going around the pad on the outside. I'm doing also the front of the nails as much as possible and after I'm totally finished with the, how the pads are nicely clean and no more hair sticking out then I'm gonna put the foot down and do the rounding from when the paw sits at the table. Just comb everything down and just go round the foot. Now the hook as well. I'm doing the hawk straight and now I'm just gonna comb up and scissor and comb and scissor. Just make sure all the hairs are as clean, as neat as possible. And here I'm using the Yento Ergoline Blender 48 Teeth to do the finishing. And here I'm doing the inside and now the last leg. Also I'm lifting up and doing around the pads and then I'm putting the leg down and just going round and round lifting all the hair up. I'm using the normal scissors here to do most of the work and here you saw me with the comb lifting up the hair and here nicely the hocks and then I'm lifting the hair up again to give the dog some angulation and here also, you see me lifting up the coat and here you see how nicely rounded the bum is and you see the angulation nicely. And here again I'm doing some finishing with the Ergo blending scissor. And here again some more finishing. Here you see a finished boomer. Boomer is in a very commercial style, which should be redone every four to five weeks. And Boomer, as you can see, doesn't need a lot of maintenance. Maybe he needs washing once or twice in between the grooms and should be very easy to maintain. If you have seen any products I was using during this video, don't forget there's a link down below. You can just click on it and you can find any of the products I was using and you can buy them. And here once more you see the before and after pictures of Boomer the Shih Tzu.
Thank you for watching. This was Kitty for Kitty Talks Dogs. Keep on grooming with passion and see you next time.